Hi friends, it's Katie Steinberg here, and uh, once again bringing you this week's message from Missing Peace, which was uh, Frisbee this week, so um, one of our physical expressions and a lot of fun. Um, before we get to that though, I just want to remind you that uh, this Sunday we are talking about brainwashing, gaslighting, and religion. We're blessed with um, Dr. Ashley Lear from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University uh, to lead us in one of our cerebral expressions and a discussion of how these different concepts interact and overlap and, uh, and what happens in the human brain um, as they trigger these different possibilities. So I hope you'll be there for that. And we're having Sunday Soul Brunch again, this time in support of United for Puerto Rico. We're asking folks to show up and buy tickets, of course, but also to contribute toiletry items that we can then send on to Puerto Rico to continue to help with the effort. 100% uh, of the proceeds of this event will go to United for Puerto Rico, and uh, we're excited about it. It is Sunday, October 22nd at 10.30, and it's at Orman Brewing Company, um, and we're just super excited to do this event for such a good cause and hope that you will be there. But without any further ado, uh, here is this week's message from Missing Peace. Let's begin with a few words from the psalmist. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider me and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep the sleep of death. And my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. It's been a hell of a few weeks, friends. Each week we seem to keep revisiting the compassion fatigue the exhaustive power of natural and unnatural disasters alike. And for most of us, this is piled, heaped, carelessly dumped on top of already busy and hectic and full lives. Maybe you haven't quite reached the place of despair. I hope you haven't. But are we not heavy with, saturated by, so much bad news? Did God leave? check out, forget us? Is there, if there is a source of all goodness, hope, and peace as we profess, it's time to show up. But before we sink with our tax into the swamp of sadness, have you noticed that the tragedy and destruction of our world also has this way of highlighting the heroes, the goodness, the possibility of this world? I don't mean to move too quickly past the grief and the trauma. It's right to spend some time there and process and grieve and even return there from time to time. But also, even then, in the darkest hour, maybe even most in the darkest hour, these little bright lights show up and the darkness seems to crack open even just a little. And people, regular people, shepherd would-be victims away from dangerous concert-turned battlefields and become heroes. And recent disaster victims themselves become fundraisers and supply collectors. And regular, common citizenry band together to help clear debris and lend a hand and somehow, some way, even in the face of, or maybe especially in the face of, tragedy, goodness and hope and light ekes its way in. I don't know what you call that, and what we call it is of minimal importance, but that goodness that happens, that phoenixes its way up from the ashes of heart-wrenching, catastrophic wreck of a world. But I trust it. I trust it to continue to happen. I trust that the source of all goodness and hope and peace, inadequately named God, continues to show up sometimes, most obviously in the face of greatest need. The psalm we started with goes on to say, 
but I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Somehow, some way, we are again made whole, not by magic and not without pain and suffering, but because of the love-filled, healing, renewing energy behind creation. Because spring always follows the winter and hope always follows the horror. So I will trust in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in salvation. Brene Brown says, the goal is to get to the place where we can think. I am aware of what's happening, the part I play, and how I can make it better. And that doesn't mean I have to deny joy in my life. And so on Sunday, despite heavy hearts and foggy minds that linger in the wake of so much chaos, we created a little joy. A little darkness cracking, laughter causing, hope making joy. Amen. I hope you too will find some joy in the midst of the darkness and whatever the things are that bring you joy. For us last Sunday it was Frisbee, uh, maybe for you it's something else and uh, I hope that you will make some time for that because it is miraculous and healing when we do. As always, I want to invite you to come to Missing Peace in the flesh sometime. Um, we meet Sundays at 1030 and we're nomadic so you'll have to track us down. But the easiest way to do that is to text PEACE to 33222. Or you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube to keep up with where we are from week to week. And as I want to remind you one more time, Sunday Soul Brunch is in two weeks on the 22nd. It's at Orman Brewing Company, and we have a wonderful brunch, and The Jam is going to be there playing some amazing music, as they always do. And 100% of the proceeds will be going to United for Puerto Rico, um, and we're asking folks to bring toiletry items, too, as a donation for that effort. But until next time, grace and peace, my friends. <laughs>